Are you ready to enter the amazing world of RedisMonitoring.org? I will be your guide, Michal Konečný. If it's it too hard for you to pronounce, just call me Michael. Uh, I'm a wizard from the realm of RedisMonitoring.org. Uh, for those of you who don't know what uh, RedisMonitoring.org does, it's actually taking the news from the outside world and trying to notify the, uh, the uh, gatekeepers of the packages in Fedora. So, uh, I will move with you through the future of, the, of this amazing world. So, first, what is uh, awaits us? and what is covered by the mists of the, of the future. Okay, so this is the bright future, this is the far away future. I hope we will get there someday, but it's too far. It's not something we will get today or in some uh, visible future. But it looks nice. It is bright, it's taking everything. And this is what it should contain. It actually sh uh, could be, uh, should be a uh, future that uh, is uh, more uh, friendly to the, uh, to the user. Uh, it's more reliable right now than it is right now. It should uh, have plenty of, of new features, right? Uh, creating, uh, creating PRs instead of notifying only on, uh, on Baxilla. Uh, it should uh, have automatic recognition of project from URL. You just give the URL of the project and it will actually fill whole project in the uh, race monitoring for you. Uh, creating GitHub issues for FlatHub, this is something I want personally to add, but right now it's nothing like like there, there yeah, like this in there. Uh, reading libraries, I/O, SSE, this is uh, actually working. Uh, uh, but it's not really reliable. Uh, every project needs to be checked uh, checked uh, manually uh, after the, uh, after uh, getting it from libraries I/O. Uh, I want to see nice statistics for Anitya and the new hotness, which are both uh, part of the release monitoring.org. Uh, Anitya is taking uh, care of the projects. It's scanning for new update, uh, new uh, releases of the projects. Uh, it communicates with user. It communicates uh, with, through API uh, with uh, some scripts. Uh, the, uh, when it finds something new, it notifies the new hotness, and the new hotness is actually something that is creating right now, it's creating uh, the notification in Baxilla. Okay, this is how it should look, so it's not the uh, current, uh, current state. Um, okay, uh, and one of the things is uh, removing Baxilla entirely from the workflow. If you will get PR, directly to the to your package. It's not really needed to notify you on the bugzilla. Okay, so now we look much closer, which is not that bright future. Oh okay. Which is not that bright. But it's still still the future we could actually achieve. Okay. So First thing, 
First thing is the maintenance mode. This is something we actually uh, right now considering as a team. Um, this uh, could, should fix the most irritating issues uh, we are facing right now. It's the GitHub write limiting. We have uh, around, I think, 15,000 projects on GitHub on inside Anitya. And the write limit uh, is uh, considered to be 5,000, uh, uh, I'm not sure how they call it, nodes or something like this which is depleted pretty quickly. I actually did some optimization, optimization in the last uh, release, which is uh, uh, actually checking uh, only for the projects that uh, weren't checked before. So it's not doing, uh, previously it was doing uh, warp every project in, in a one run. No, it is, the, it is some sort of queue, so if, when the project is actually checked, it, doesn't, it isn't checked in the next run. There are still some optimization that could be done, and still we need to do it. Uh, what does it actually mean in practice? When you can it means that uh, we are checking the projects uh, uh, right now every hour or so and uh, the github rate limit is reset at every hour so you check like 2000 projects and then you uh, you hit the limit mm -hmm. and you don't uh, you actually can't check the uh, 1500 uh, 15000 projects in one round so yeah yeah, yeah. There, uh, one of the um, things we want to, how we want to optimize it is to create, uh, uh, is to add, uh, uh, take a uh, college cursor. It's the uh, cursor for the latest release. So we will, um, we will continue from this release or this stack. So we will not uh, actually get all the tags every time because this is, but it's uh, reaching the rate limit most often. Uh, a notification about more than one release at once. So right now we are notifying only about the uh, latest release, which is not, uh, uh, which is not really uh, something that uh, some pack packagers w uh, want. They are actually have uh, versions older. They only, they want to uh, get uh, if there are more than one one update before, uh, in the meantime they want to get a uh, notification about it even if it's not the latest yeah yeah this is the this is exactly what I d have in mind creation of duplicit projects there are plenty of duplicit projects because uh, at uh, constraints and not really uh, created, uh, created, uh, mm, how to say it, uh, are bad right now. Uh, yeah, and uh, there are, uh, we need some, uh, some normalization because uh, the constraint right now is set to the uh, to home page of the project. And one, we have two same projects. One is uh, with homepage in, on GitHub. One is on the homepage of project. Uh, third is using HTTP instead of HTTPS and so on. So this is something we, we need to address. Uh, I think this is not really used by now. I'm not, 
I'm not really sure because I didn't know there was something like this. Oh, okay. Uh, I didn't you know, but uh, this actually we have some some uh, ideas how we want to address it, and we also want uh, to actually let the users uh, create their, their own environment they want to uh, watch because this is not only for Fedora. There are plenty of distributions that are using this. Uh, not every of this distribution has uh, some automation about, around it, but uh, they are watching for new releases. Uh, I got email from someone from OpenSUSE who uh, was interested to use it uh, for the OpenSUSE automation. automation. Uh, it was similar to ones we are using, so notify user that there is a new version of the project. Uh, the next thing is reliability of the new hotness. The new hotness uh, right now is working that it uh, takes message from the Fedora messaging queue, which Fedora messaging uh, uh, made uh, the new hotness more reliable because uh, it's actually uh, not missing any message. But uh, there are things like uh, if I hit some issue, the new hotness is uh, fails and then tries to read the same message and fails again. So this is one of the things. The next thing is if we uh, can't, for example, create Bugzilla uh, issue, because there is, I'm not sure, uh, there is temporary uh, outage or something like this. Uh, we uh, don't have any uh, any way to handle this. We actually only say that we can't create and drop the message, which is not really what the user users want. So we need to figure out how to, uh, how, how to uh, handle these temporary issues that are only uh, temporary locking the mechanism some retry mechanism or something like this. Yeah, and the last one is notification settings read directly from this git. This is uh, the line between the new hotness and Pagur. Because uh, right now we have uh, uh, one repository on Pagur where the notification settings is set. There are plenty of users who don't know there is something like this. And in the future, it's actually, uh, in Pagor is actually implemented, but not deployed. But uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's actually uh, deployed, uh, developed. Uh, you will see some uh, dro uh, drop down menu, so you can uh, actually uh, set your notification settings directly on this Git repository. So we will have it uh, where you expect it. <laughs> At least I hope you expect it on this uh, place. Okay, so next one. Next one is not really bright future of the uh, Anitya, because this is one of the, of the optional things we are considering because as a CP team, we have plenty of applications we are uh, we are maintaining and we are taking care of. So one of the optional future is to replace Anitya directly with libraries I/O. This has some uh, things that are pros, some cons. So yeah, it's about the consideration if this is a good good approach. The pros are there will be less code base for to maintain for us, yeah, which is not something that users are uh, interested in, but it will help to make other uh, applications we are maintaining better. Uh, 
the libraries I/O currently watches, I think, uh, half a million projects. So there are plenty of projects you uh, you can actually uh, see the updates for. Uh, what is uh, cons is there is no authentication with FAS, uh, but uh, how I look at it, uh, there are only uh, only one who needs to actually authenticate. Uh, is uh, the one who wants to add some project to libraries I/O, uh, which is the is the next issue. There is no option to really custom to add custom projects. You can't actually add any project you want, uh, which is any uh, could provide you with the custom backend, which is allowing you to actually parse any web page and look for uh, for some regular expression. Uh, in libraries I.O. they only support some uh, known uh, repositories where the projects are uh, are created or ment uh, maintained or developed or distributed uh, and only those are supported. So you actually can't add, it, uh, add any project you uh, you want. I was uh, surprised I found one user is uh, using uh, Anija to watch for a new version of uh, his firmware for his laptop. He is just uh, uh, parsing the page uh, and looking for, for the regex uh, he, he, uh, he wants to find. So he, I was surprised that uh, somebody is using this, uh, using the Anija like this. But it's possible. There were, there are many, many of them, but uh, most of them are historical because uh, the backends that uh, Anita support uh, doesn't have, uh, didn't have uh, GitHub, for example, which is really big. So most of the, these packages are actually trying to parse GitHub, but this is not working anymore because uh, they changed uh, uh, the HTML, uh, so you can actually it, uh, use it anymore. I uh, look at them and most of them are, aren't uh, getting a new version. Uh, and the uh, third one is there is no uh, mapping to actually distribute to actual distribution for uh, Addis Fedora. But uh, I looked uh, at the uh, Anita, and uh, the Anita has, uh, I think, 30 distributions that is watching. Most of, some of them are not distribution really, but uh, are used as. Uh, some group that is grouping the projects that are in there. So we will need to ask if the libraries I.O. will support something like this. Uh, does libraries I.O. support, for example, GitHub? Yeah, GitHub is, is there, it's supported. Uh, they have, uh, I don't know how, how much they have, I think 15 or so, uh, the, uh, sources you can use. There is uh, there is Drupal, there is uh, PyPy, there is GitHub, there is SourceForge, uh, there is NPM. Uh, uh, yeah, there is plenty of them, but uh, you can actually add a, add something that is not uh, fitting in the backends they have. The last thing is the questions. So do you want to ask something about releasemonitoring.org or about wizard or about magic? <laughs> On this one, okay. I will repeat the question. It is uh, it uh, release monitoring is using uh, 
uh, Airbase helper or uh, how it is work. Um, as you can see on, the, on this side, the Anitya is actually the front end. Uh, there is, uh, when it, when it, it uh, checking for the new version by running, uh, there is service. It's not a current job anymore. It's the latest version, I uh, change it to, to the service. So it's no much more reliable and use queues, so it's better. Uh, when it found some new uh, version, it uh, notifies the new hotness. The new hotness is uh, the backend for this. It uh, is looking if the version is actually uh, not in Fedora already. Uh, it is uh, looking uh, on the Bugzilla, if there is Bugzilla created for it actually, or if it should create one. Uh, if uh, there is, uh, it actually doing the rebasing, so it, uh, it's, or, or not rebasing, it's doing the RPM bump. It's bumping the version in RPM and uh, sends the patch, to, uh, attach the patch to the Baxilla issue. Uh, this is something that I want to actually uh, make more more automatic uh, with creating directly uh, PR in, in Pagur, which is uh, work in progress. Uh, it, uh, using, it's using Bucket for this. So it will, it will be, uh, I think it will be more, uh, more friendly for the users because you will actually see in your uh, this Git repository or your source repository, there is new version and uh, it will actually create a patch that you can merge if, you, if it's good. It's not doing, uh, it's not doing uh, any uh, complex or any, uh, yeah. Any complex action, it's just uh, 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 updating the version. So you need to check if everything is working. Uh, if it will be, uh, if it will be combined with uh, Fedora CI, it will be much nicer. So uh, I need to think uh, more about uh, if you want to have a specific version to specific uh, branch in your disk repository to have some configuration. I'm not sure, uh, did Tomáš, did Pakit uh, try to think about it? If you have plenty of branches and uh, you want to watch only some versions, prefix in some branches, uh, okay, so uh, for example, you have uh, branches for Fedora 28, Fedora 29, uh, Fedora 30, and do you want only the major major version uh, changes to uh, to the Fedora 30, and for Fedora 29, you want to uh, have only versions uh, two point something. Yeah. So if there is some sort of some kind of mapping for this, so you know where you actually want to uh, the packet to create the PR against which branch. So you can set it up in the config that you uh, Yeah, ah, yeah, but the config is on the upstream side. Yeah. Ah, yeah. So we need to think about something else because we don't have uh, access to the upstream. Okay. So, any other question? Yeah, this is, uh, this is something in consideration, so it could be removed. Uh, in for, for now, it's better to keep it. Because even if we are filling the PRs directly to, uh, to the disk, it, it's better to keep the Bugzilla. Because 
it will be much nicer even for those who want to only watch for the Baxilla updates. Okay. Okay, so, uh, yeah, I should repeat the question. Question was uh, how the uh, GitHub rate limiting is uh, is working and how it, sh it uh, costs, how much it costs uh, if you want uh, higher hi uh, rate limits. And if there is possibility to create an uh, app that is actually watching uh, for events. Okay, so. Uh, I didn't uh, look at uh, at the cost uh, because I'm most of the issue is on the Anita side because we are checking uh, well, every project from the beginning to end so we are just taking too much when we do the optimization and we still hit the rate limiting we will uh, ask about it. I think the CentOS CI actually uh, had similar issue with, with hitting the rate limit. I need to ask uh, someone from from the CentOS CI team. Yeah, they resolved it like the other way, so they switched to even based. Ah, years. okay. Uh, this I'm not sure if if this. Uh, this will be doable for us because uh, because uh, we have uh, I'm not sure I think the Anitya has fifteen thousand or twenty thousand projects and uh, most of them are GitHub so I'm not sure if uh, watching for events for that much application is actually doable. So, but uh, it, I think it will be possible to actually use libraries I.O. They have, uh, they have SSE, so you can actually uh, watch for any new. So, we have two minutes left. Uh, okay, the question is if we, if you can use uh, GitHub notifications for the new releases. Uh, there is issue that some projects are not uh, doing releases. Only some of them does. So it's not really um, something you could count on. And there are even some projects that are doing releases, uh, no, that are not doing releases, that are not tagging but uh, having new versions. And I didn't find out how to actually find out what version they have, because they don't actually have any, anywhere listed this. So. Yeah, but this is only I found one project that is working like this. It's creating new version, but it's not, there is no tag, there is no, no release, uh, but the version is somewhere. <laughs> I was surprised when I found out, I found out about this one. Uh, otherwise, as I said, uh, we are just uh, trying a new approach uh, uh, which uh, will allow you to actually watch for the releases instead of tags, because right now we are only checking tags on the, on the GitHub. Some of the projects tagging uh, most interesting things. Sometimes they are tagging some releases, which is fine. But sometimes you can find a tag that doesn't, that this looks like a mistake by someone. 
not really duck that should duck something. So okay, we have five PM, so if you want to ask me anything, I will be here, so <laughs> thank you for thank you for uh, for your attention. Here is a uh, reference. Uh, you can look at it. It's uh, actually uh, my community blo my community blog posts, which I am doing for uh, for the risk monitoring. It's uh, done in the uh, in the wizard way. So <laughs> it's uh, it's not really a technical one, uh, or it's technical, but it's uh, in fantasy way <laughs> written. So if you want to. Uh, loud when reading blog posts, you can <laughs> actually look there. So, thank you.